Three point charges are arranged at the corners of a square of side L. Okay, that's shown in the figure below. It didn't say below, but it's basically probably that figure. So we got a Q, we have a plus 3Q, we have negative 2Q. Ooh, nice, they color code the positive and negative. Convenient, I like it. So we'll go to green, not to imply negative, just because it's a color I enjoy. What is the potential at the fourth corner, point A, taking V equals zero at a great distance, which is pretty standard. Uh, poten electric potential equals zero infinity, though it doesn't necessarily have to. Um, it's the convention that's normally done and makes life easier at a great distance. Infinity. They don't like to say infinity because infinity doesn't, I guess, technically exist. And so great distance is an approximation of forever. Give your answer in terms of Q, L, and appropriate constants. Okay? So this is, so the definition of electric potential is the work required per unit charge to bring a uh, test charge, I guess, to a, or a specific point in space, specifically from infinity. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So we're going to be finding the potential, ah, right here, potential, at this point A. Now does it say potential? What is the potential? Yep. So we're not actually bringing a charge in. We're not looking for energy. We're looking at potential, which is then used to find energy. Okay. So since potential is a scalar, means we can just find each one and add them all up. So we kind of know the potential for a point charge. Um, it's just one of those things we memorize is K Q over R. I'm going to use small Q just so I don't get it confused with the Q that they're using. There we go. Over R. Therefore, we can find it for, I'm going to call these, let's see here, voltage um, at point A from plus Q. So this means, my notation here means, I'm finding the voltage at point A due to the charge, this guy right here, up here, plus Q. So this will be K Q over square root of two. You know, I might think, wow, where'd that square root of two come from? Oh, square root of two times L. There we go. Um, the distance from Q to A right here is L squared plus L squared square rooted. So you have L squared plus L squared square rooted square root of 2L squared, which is square root of 2 times L. So that's where that square root of 2L comes in. And it's easy to kind of get lost in that, oh yeah, that actual plus Q there is a little bit further away than the other two points. Okay, so then we have voltage. Let's do the other positive one, plus 3Q, at A due to plus 3Q. And that will be K... 3q, because we now have 3qs, over l, because it's only an l distance away. And then we have, I think it's a negative 2q, I should probably check, negative 2q, yep. Voltage at a due to negative 2q. This is not a standard notation, so don't expect everyone to understand it. This is just kind of how I do my internal work. Um, I think the official notation with this would probably be without the comma and without the parentheses. So... Potential at A due to negative 2Q would be K negative 2Q. This is multiplication, not subtraction, all over L. Okay? So then total voltage. So there's no arrow up there because it's, again, scalar, not a um, vector. K Q over square root of 2L plus K3Q over L minus K2Q over L. Simplifying life a little bit. I guess it should change color to show that we are transitioning to the final stage here, the end game. So we have KQ over L times 1 over square root of 2. 3 minus 2 is plus 1. So the answer, this would be, I would be tempted to leave it in this answer, but if you want a more numeric, we'll go to Wolfram, and I will do 
1 over square root of 2 plus 1, probably like 1.7, yeah, 1.707, 1.707 equals, is about 1.707 kq over L. Now let's see, and they asked for uh, appropriate constants, depending on what your constants are, I use k, but k is the same as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So just a different way, if you want to use k, or if you want to use 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, your decision, well, decision of who's ever grading your homework, but um, that's, the, uh, that's the conversion between the two. Not a big deal. And you could probably even make that into an um, actual number too, because it's a constant, but I like to leave things as exact and correct as they are, and k, or 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, is more exact than whatever string of numbers you put out there. Okay, so let's make sure we got this right, make sure we're going through this, give your answer in terms of kq over l. So this gave us a positive value, assuming q is positive, and so it means it's going to take work to move a positive test charge, so positive, over to a which makes sense because we know that this plus 3q is the same distance as negative 2q, and since the plus 3 is bigger than negative 2, or the 3 is bigger than 2, it's going to be a positive, so we're going to get a net, um, it's going to be a net positive force here, which means it's going to be hard to bring a positive, towards, um, positive charge in, so we're expecting a positive amount of work, which means that we should have a positive potential, which we do. So that is the problem, and that's how you do it. So to really recap real quick, whenever you have um, potentials and you're trying to find potential to do the multiple points, the easiest way to do that is just to go point by point, and then after you have them all analyzed, you just add them up. They're scalars, so you can add them up normally. If it was electric fields, it'd be a little bit different because you'd, each of them would have their own vector components, and you'd have to add the vector components together to get your final uh, vector. Potential is not a vector, it's a scalar, so it kind of simplifies adding them up. Hope this helped. I will see you next time.